Nick Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Nine minutes before eight, back to our conversation about possible disruption in London. These four days count them of protests, and there may well be a view on this from our next guest, who is Conservative MP and Transport Secretary Mark Harper, who joins me now. But I would imagine he's a smart enough man to know the series of questions that's coming his way first. So as an opening delivery, thank you for coming on the show, Mr Harper. Um, if leadership is all about decisiveness, I understand the Prime Minister has had in his possession the report on the allegations concerning his Deputy Dominic Raab for getting on for 24 hours. Um, to quote that famous song, why are we waiting? Good morning. Good morning. Well, look, I think given that the um, there were serious complaints were made and that uh, there's been a five-month inquiry by Adam Tolley KC, it seems to me that the report is likely to be extensive. And I think for the Prime Minister to take the time um, to read the report in full, in detail himself as well as all the other things that he has to do as Prime Minister, it does not seem unreasonable that, that that's going to take a little bit of time. And as you said, he hasn't even had the report for one day yet, and there was a five-month inquiry. I think if he's going to be fair to the complainant in this case, and also to Dominic Raab, it's reasonable for him to do that process properly. He's a man that takes due process very seriously, and he will then make a decision and set that out. And we've seen that from previous decisions that he's taken, but he wants to get it right. The Labour Party is saying this shows a lack of decisiveness, a lack of leadership. Your response to that, if you would, Secretary of State? No, I think it demonstrates a Prime Minister who makes good decisions based on all of the facts. He's asked a KC to do an extensive inquiry that's taken five months. There will no doubt be a lot of information for the Prime Minister to review, and he wants to review it before he makes a decision. It's an important decision that will have a big impact on both the complainants and on the Deputy Prime Minister, and I think it's important the Prime Minister takes the time to do it properly. Due process actually is important. Every time you rush decisions and you don't take them properly, you don't make good ones. And I think the Prime Minister wants to get it right. That's what he's been doing since he's been Prime Minister. How confident uh, are you that he's not... Confidence will do it. Sorry, talk over you. How confident Sorry. are you that he's not being weakened in the public view because of the time he's taking? Well, look, when, when you say he's, the time he's taking, I think most people but, listening to your show will think he only got the report yesterday. It's a five-month inquiry, Mr. and I think you've got to have a bit of sensibleness about how long it takes to read a lengthy report and make a decision. I think one, only not even one day has elapsed well, I know, since he got Mr. the report. But Mr Harper, I, I admire your loyalty, and I hear your argument, but this is a man who, of course, is charged with the defence defense of this nation. He might one day be called upon to make the gravest of decisions concerning how we defend ourselves. I wouldn't imagine that would take him 24 hours. He might be asked as to whether he wants to deploy troops in Ukraine in the event of that conflict developing. Again, is that going to take him 24 hours? For the love of all that's holy, this is something he has to have been close to. He must have been formulating views as to where he thinks he is with Mr Raab, and yet still we wait and wait. This speaks to a man who, when it comes to make decisive actions, such as defending this country, just dithers and dithers and needs more time, doesn't it? No, no, I, I don't think it does at all. If you look at what he's, decisions he's taken about important defence matters, he's been very clear and decisive about the important steps we've taken to support uh, Ukraine. Uh, Britain is one of the leading countries in supporting Ukraine. The Prime Minister's currently been dealing with leading the government's response with our international partners to the very difficult developing situation in Sudan. That's why the Foreign Secretary is flying back from his trip. The Prime Minister's been dealing with all of these issues, as well as considering this report about the Deputy Prime Minister, which he only received yesterday and I think he wants to take that decision seriously and put actually the proper weight on it which is important actually for the complainants in the case as well as the Deputy Prime Minister. How would you describe working with the Deputy Prime Minister? Sir Robert Buckland says he is quotes at the end of the robustness scale and Eddie now Lord Lister told me uh, back in February quotes he's not an easy man to work with. What have your experiences been like? Well look I've always got on very well with Dominic Raab, but I don't want to prejudge the outcome of this case. Um, the, the, there have been a number of serious complaints made about Dominic Raab, which is why this inquiry was set up. That will have taken evidence from a large range of people, the complainants and others, 
and Dominic Raab, and I don't want to prejudge it. That would be entirely wrong. I think it's right. Well, I was asking you what it's like to work with Mr. Raab. Well, I told you. I've, All right. Well, okay. I told you. I've, I've always got on very well with him, but okay. uh, I don't want to prejudge the outcome of this inquiry. I think that would be wholly wrong and unfair okay. to the complainants who've made serious complaints. But have you ever seen him shout at a colleague? No, look, you're, you're trying to draw me into that. Whatever my it. personal experiences are, whatever my personal experiences are, there are people that have had serious complaints to make, and I think it's okay. important that we take the inquiry seriously, the report seriously, which is exactly what the Prime Minister... Let's is. move on after one last question on this. Were Mr Raab to stay in post, how damaging could it be with the government's relations with the civil service? Well, look, you're trying to draw me into speculating about the outcome of the report. Perfectly fair question, um, but I think it's better to wait right. for the report to be published and the Prime Minister set out his conclusion. Let's take you elsewhere, uh, take you to people who will be coming to London as part of four days of demonstrating for Extinction Rebellion and other mm -hmm. causes, and I'm sure you and I are on the same page. We welcome the fact that they can demonstrate, but there are concerns about, the, if I can put it to you, disruption they could bring to London to traffic and possibly even the London Marathon. Extinction Rebellion is saying they wouldn't dream of messing with the London Marathon. Just Stop Oil are still refusing to give any assurances. Your overview of this Secretary of State, not least is, of course, transport is your brief. Well, look, f first of all, we do live in a free country and it's right that people can protest, but it's also important that people don't disrupt other people going about their normal lives. Uh, I think it would be terrible for anybody to disrupt the marathon. Thousands of people will have trained for a whole year or more for this, many of them raising money for charity. Uh, and I think it would be terrible for people to try and use this as an excuse to, to make a political point. I would also just say, by the way, for both of those groups, they campaign about climate change. This government is one of the globally leading governments about dealing with climate change. We've only just published our zero emission mandate for vehicles, how we're going to have sustainable aviation. I was meeting with the aviation industry about that on Monday. Actually, these um, protesters would be much better off protesting in countries where they don't take this seriously rather than protesting against a government which is actually one of the global leaders in dealing with climate change. But we'll be very robust about dealing with people who break the law and I hope they don't disrupt the lives of ordinary people trying to go about their daily business this weekend. Just to come back on when you say very robust, are we more likely to see the tactics that we saw last Saturday at the Grand National then than perhaps offering these demonstrators blankets and a hot cup of tea? Well, look, I think we'll deal with people breaking the law. You'll know uh, when we had Just Stop All protesters trying to disrupt people on the roads. Uh, I instructed National Highways to seek a High Court injunction to deal with them. We dealt with them robustly. A number of them were uh, put into prison, uh, and that seemed to deal with the disruption uh, right. on our national highway network. And I hope we see suitably ro robust response if any of them break the law. Last question is on our motorway network. Of course, we all learnt that the building of new so-called smart motorways will be cancelled by you and the Prime Minister go over concerns of both safety and cost. But those currently in existence will continue. This is confusing for some Secretary of State. Either these roads are safe and we can develop more, or they're not safe and we won't build any more. Which is it? Well, look, the, if you look at the safety data about casualties on motorways, the smart motorways that exist now, they're the safest roads on the strategic road network, but the public have concerns about them, and that's why we made the decision we did to cancel the new ones, but, but it's why we're keeping the existing ones, because there's a lot of public concern about them, um, and it's right to reflect well, hang on, that if in the, the public decisions concerned, that the government Mr. takes. Harper, Mr Harper, if the public are concerned about them, OK, we won't build any... Surely you need to review whether you're going to keep existing ones. I mean, either the public's view counts or it doesn't. No, it does, but they are well, actually then can we the, safest, scrap the, they're ones, the safest roads on the strategic road network and we're investing more money in more emergency refuges so that people have confidence that there's somewhere that they can stop if they uh, break down. And we're also investing more money in the technology that we use to keep those roads safe. You know, the, the things where you can shut down the lanes uh, if someone uh, has a stopped vehicle. You can so they are the safe speed on those book, motorways. Well, look, if you look at the data, they're the safest roads on the strategic road But you won't build network. new ones. That, but it the, doesn't follow, the, Mr Harper. Yes, it does. <laughs> Nick, ahead, it does, ahead, because the, the decision we set out was very clear. It was partly because of the costs and the fiscal pressures that we're facing dealing with inflation, and it's partly because of the public concern um, about those motorways. I think it was a very reasonable decision we set out. It was also an example, by the way, of the Prime Minister having made a commitment during his leadership election last summer 
and delivering on the promise that he made. He's the Prime Minister that makes promises right. and he keeps them. Grateful for your time. Thank you. Secretary of State for Transport, Mark Harper, appearing here on LBC, where at one minute after eight, it's time to get Thomas Watts with the news headlines. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC.